Folks, our Rome travel series starts here, and specifically here is the Radisson Blue at Stansted Airport, which beautifully positioned is literally right next to the terminal. You go out that door, turn right, the terminal is up there. In fact, I might even be able to see it from up here on this little uh, elevated area. It's all very posh in here. I do feel a little out of place, but if you've been to Stansted Airport before, this is the big one right next to the terminal that you literally walk past on the way through from the car park. There's the little undercover walkway over there. We've parked in a car park just over that way. The terminal, no more than three or four minutes walk that way, which is just as well because our flight is at 20 past six tomorrow morning. That'll be the next video in this series. So we are gonna have to be up early, which is why we've booked into this hotel always trying to book the flights that are the cheapest and then it gets closer to the day that we're actually due to go and i realize cheap flight usually means crazy early which usually means a hotel stay at the airport the night before and in actual fact this hotel for tonight has cost us more than the flights for the two of us so big thumbs up for false economies but as is the tradition Let's have a little look around the room, shall we? It's very nice in here. This is a fancy hotel. We've never stayed in a Radisson Blue before. This is nice. So we are already checked in. That female at the end of the room doesn't come with the room. And uh, as mentioned, it's quite snazzy in here. It's a big bed. That is a, I mean, look at the width of those pillows. They are normal width pillows. And then there's a gap. We could have, you could comfortably sleep three people in this bed. Later on in the year, we're actually going to Disneyland with Pab, who we do our podcast with. The three of us are going. Um, we could stay in a room like this together. Pab could just sleep between me and Anna, and it would be absolutely fine. But let's give you a little bit of a look around the room. Then we'll have a closer look at where we are positioned and show you just how convenient it is for both the parking and the terminal. So as you come in, we have ironing board, and iron in this little wardrobe deal. Here we have a proper wardrobe with my jacket already hung up in there. And I mean, it's an airport hotel. I've, this is probably the most hangers I've ever seen in a hotel wardrobe. But who on earth is staying here for more than one night and needs all those hangers? Hotels need to sort themselves out. That's how many hangers you need when you're staying somewhere for a week and they only give you three. We've got the bathroom on that side. We'll have a look at the bathroom in a second. Nice little floor to ceiling mirror. So you can check out how handsome I'm looking. There I am looking handsome. And then this is the other side of the wardrobe, which has a hairdryer in a little drawer. That's when you know you're somewhere fancy, when they label the hairdryer drawer. Spare towel there as well. Then we've got lots of weird furniture, which is, I mean, it looks like they just had a gift card at Ikea and just bought a bit of everything. Uh, so you've got this little thing to put your suitcases on. So we've put our suitcases on them because we like to follow the rules. Then you've got cabinet, cabinet, TV. TV is nice and big. I do appreciate a large TV, but then in this cabinet, you can see we've got our uh, boots shopping done already. We have a fridge, which I guess used to be a mini bar, but isn't anymore and it's completely empty and also not on. We've got some strawberries that we wanted to have later, but we ain't putting them in there because it's not cold. And then on this side, you've got this little slide out deal that has your beverages on, including galaxy hot chocolate. Very, very snazzy. Uh, so beverages in that one and then kettle in the one below. Again, on a little slide out drawer. We have to do the kettle cleanliness test that is a clean kettle, boys and girls. So I guess this slides out. So I don't know where you plug this in. There's no plug in this cabinet. So I guess we have to take the kettle over there onto the desk to actually use it. Are there any plugs under here? No. Nope. So there doesn't seem to be any way to plug the fridge in or plug the kettle in over here. This drawer has the safe. That is a big safe. Again, you're only ever gonna be in here for one night. That is bigger than the safe we had when we were on holiday for two weeks in Tenerife last year. It's mad. And then this little drawer is another little slide out one full of glasses. Very nice. All seems very dated. It feels like this was like a cutting edge, really snazzy hotel about 25 years ago, which I assume is exactly the situation that it is because it's all a little scuffed 
It's, I mean, you can see on the furniture. It is all a little scuffed up around the edges here. They've all got these little scuff marks on. It's clean, and obviously the TV is relatively new. That's obviously much newer than most of the rest of the room. But this furniture, it's weird and old and scuffed. And look at the state of the carpets. Not in so much as they're dirty, although, although we have got some suspect stains near the ironing board. I hope that's spilt ironing water and not someone who really loves ironing. And then again, around the bottom of the bed, it's just all a little untidy where it's, it's pretty clear they've updated some bits because that bit there looks nice and shiny and new. But then you've got no plug next to the bed. There's no USBs or plugs or anything, although he says that. Is that a USB? So there is a USB under there. So this thing is new because we've got a USB, but the plug is over here on the wall, just randomly, presumably where the TV used to be, would be my guess. I bet if we took this paint sample down, uh, behind that there's probably somewhere where the old TV was, but then they have got air conditioning. So it's, it's a weird mix of a hotel that's obviously been here a while with the touches that they needed to make to snazzy it up but still with absolutely smashed up bits like down here, where I guess this is where the Corby trouser press used to be. You can see where it used to be mounted to the wall. So again, that puts a date on the hotel. So when was the last time you stayed in a hotel that had a Corby trouser press? Must be 20 years since I've been in a hotel that had one of those. But you can see it used to be there and it's still smashed up where it was down the bottom. I'm, I'm trying not to complain, but I think I need to look up exactly how much we've paid for this. I have a horrible feeling this is the most expensive hotel we've stayed in for one of these hotel reviews ever. Um, apart probably from the Disney Marvel one that we did last year. And it doesn't feel expensive just yet. We're not done though, don't worry. Because once we get over here where Anna is guarding this table, we do have a little bit of a table with a weird shaped mirror. And again, dating it because you've got an ethernet port there rather than, there's no Wi-Fi code, there is an ethernet port and an old person phone. But then we also have this weird couch thing that Anna tells me is very, very comfortable. I will have a go on the couch in a minute. And then I, I, I can't even imagine what this is. Is this a fold out bed? None of this moves. I don't know okay. what that could possibly be. A desk. It's, is it? I don't know. And then another bedside table there. And then the real reason we paid for this hotel, as opposed to staying in the Premier Inn a little further out. Anna loves planes. How do you get these curtains out of the way? This hotel, and this is the selling point, that means none of the other stuff matters, because we have a runway view. So you can see the planes there. Presumably at some point we'll be able to see the planes taking off as well. This is a good indicator of just how close we are to the terminal as well, because that is the terminal building just there. So we are literally, what, 150 yards away from the terminal building from where we are right now. It'll probably take a little bit longer than that for us to walk there in the morning, but it is as close as you could possibly get to the terminal here at Stansted, which I guess is a good thing. Right, let's have a look at this bathroom and then I'll try this chair out. So if we come down here to the bathroom, I've not even been in here yet. So what have we got? Another chance for you to ogle your old pal Kev, your pervs. Um, a vanity kit for my face and nail care. My, nail, my nails are okay at the moment. Got some uh, soap, a shower cap. Again, I don't remember the last time I stayed in a hotel with a shower cap. I'm taking that home with me. And some body lotion, a couple of glasses. Why is there a phone in here? Phone works. Double uh, toilet roll dispenser, in case it's a two-handed job, I guess. And then we have the toilet, not the toilet, the bath. Don't use this as the toilet, boys and girls. We have a bath that has some rather snazzy looking shampoo and body wash, a few more towels. And then, what is that contraption? That is like a spaceship shower. I can't even, work out how that works. Um, so I guess we push this button. How do you make the shower go on? 
Oh, there we go. So it kind of just comes out in a ring. So you get a circle of water firing at you. Awesome, I love a circle of water. And now that tap's still on. Do we think that's gonna turn off? There we go. So, furniture test. First, this thing, which Anna has already got on and says it is quite comfortable. Oh, oh I tell you what, this is very pleasant to sit on. I like this a lot. We need to get one of these for home. It's just really comfortable. I feel like I'm sitting down in the 70s. This is amazing. But again, dates the room, I think. You don't get this kind of thing in 2024. We shall also test the bed. Ah. It's really big. It's quite comfortable. The pillows are so soft. But this is a, uh, this is a comfy bed, boys and girls. So as much as I was moaning, it definitely has its pluses. Really comfy bed and uh, runway view is very good. Right, I can't actually find the email because I've not got a phone signal in here because there's no Wi-Fi. Um, so I don't know exactly how much we've paid for this room, um, but Google Maps, which was still open on my phone, tells me that to get a room for tonight would be £189. We've got the superior room, because it says that in the original booking email, despite not having the price on it. So I guess our room was a little bit more. That does include breakfast. She told us when we checked in that apparently we paid to upgrade to breakfast. I said, I don't think we have, because our flight's at 20 past six in the morning. So we, uh, we're we gonna be long gone before you start serving breakfast at six. Although apparently, according to this piece of paper in front of me, there is a grab and go breakfast that starts at 4 a.m which is complimentary, which she didn't tell me about at reception, um, but it says here, each buffet breakfast is priced at 18 pounds and starts at 6 a.m. So if we've paid to upgrade to them, that's 36 pounds. We are gonna get some grab and go. You can bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna be grabbing and going. Does it say anything on here about Wi-Fi? Because there is, I have no signal at all in here. There is a wine tower though, which is open until midnight, which is, John and I said, we also have a pool. We could have brought our trunks and gone swimming like we did in Southampton. Oh, nonsense. So as you can see, once you get out into the lobby and bar area of the hotel, it does look very, very snazzy. Much snazzier out here than it is in the rooms. Right, I've come outside because I did want to show you just how close it is to the terminal and to the, uh, to the car parks. So that car park there, that multi-storey is the short stay green car park so that's where we've parked so it's literally right next door so convenient for the hotel now but also for getting to the terminal in the morning and when we get back next week because anyone who's flown from Stansted before probably recognizes this tunnel and that tunnel is what leads you down to the terminal and that building there that is the terminal so huge points for convenience especially at like half past four tomorrow morning when we're uh, when we're not in a mood for a long walk or a taxi transfer or anything like that. So definitely has its plus points. What is really gonna frustrate me though is we've no Wi-Fi in the hotel and I haven't even got a phone signal out here, EE at Stansted Airport, not a good look. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to find out how much we actually paid for it. I think it's safe to assume it was cheaper than the price of just turning up on the night but does have the breakfast included so i imagine we're looking at the best part of 200 pounds plus the car park is then another 100 pounds or so on top of that so when you compare it to the most recent hotel and parking deal that we had down in southampton for the cruise recently which cost me just over 100 pounds for five days of parking and the hotel this is probably about three times the price of that for a roughly equivalent amount of time um, the hotel is probably a little bit nicer, um, certainly even more convenient than that one was, so it has a lot of plus points. Um, but I always thought Radisson Blue was a premium brand, maybe I've misunderstood that because it doesn't, certainly the lobby area feels like one, but the rooms feel like they're due renovation, which they probably are. I guess it's fine. And ultimately, all of this counts for nothing because Anna is having an absolutely lovely time. I've left her in the hotel room. Um, she's just moved the chair right up against the window. And she's just gonna sit there watching the planes take off and land until presumably they stop. I have told her we've got to be up at like 
three, half three in the morning to catch our flight. So she shouldn't stay up too late watching planes. I expect she's going to ignore me and be very, very grouchy tomorrow morning, which will be the next video. Like I say, this is the start of the new series, the Rome series. So the next video, which will be out next week, will be our travel day. And then we've got three, four, four days in Rome. So I'm recording this on a Thursday. Friday will be our travel day, but like I say, really early. We'll be in Rome by half past 10 tomorrow morning. And then we've got all day Saturday, all day Sunday, all day Monday, and then we fly home in the evening on Tuesday. So we'll have four, effectively four full days in Rome. I do have to fit in a few bits for some of the other channels while we're, while we're there. Um, I'm going to a Roma match to do a match day vlog for the main channel, which you might have already seen by the time this video comes out. If not, it'll be out very, very soon. Um, we'll be going to the Lego store in Rome for the new Lego channel, Block Party, which if you haven't subscribed to yet, you should subscribe to now. Um, that's me and Anna doing Lego, and it's a lot of fun. And of course, over the course of the next month or so, you'll be getting new videos once a week, showing you our lovely little trip. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video, found it helpful. If you have, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it there for me. Subscribe to the channel for loads more travel content. It's not just this trip. We've got Edinburgh coming up. We've got Lanzarote coming up. We've got Centre Parks. We've got Disneyland. We've got Rotterdam for TwitchCon. There's so much travel coming up just over the next three or four months. So well worth subscribing and turning your notifications on so you don't miss any of it. And thank you very much for watching.